Hi, this is Fruit Guru with City States, and today we're here to talk a little bit about City States domination. Now, many of you have probably seen footage from our City States Medieval game. The difference is that Domination is a lighter version of Medieval and actually runs in a web browser, whereas City States Medieval is a full 3D experience and has its own clients. So with that said, we're gonna just gonna go over some of the basics of City States Domination in this video, explain some of the differences between the two and show some basic level gameplay. And just as always, if you can keep in mind that this is an early developer build, right now all the focus is going on functionality and making sure that the game mechanics actually work. So things like the UI have taken a backseat, but these will of course be addressed at a later stage. So what you're looking at right now, even in terms of numbers for upgrade times or resources needed, these will all be changed as well as the general look of the game. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the resources bar up at the top here. Now, if you've seen our stuff from City States Medieval, this is going to look very, very similar to you. And in a lot of ways, it is. However, there are a couple of nuances and fundamental differences that set these two games apart. The first I'm going to talk about are villagers. In City States Medieval, you've seen that we're able to assign villagers at any given time to different buildings in order to increase production. However, in City States Domination, villagers are an expendable resource, much like wood or stone. So if you need five villagers to set up a building, those five villagers are gone forever, and you're gonna to need to keep repopulating these through other buildings, such as the house. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is Hex. City States Medieval is free to play. You don't actually need Hex to get started to play, but in Domination, it's a little bit different. Fundamental mechanics actually require Hex to, to use. So you're gonna have a choice. You're gonna be able to buy Hex, or you're going to be able to funnel in Hex from City States Medieval in order to speed up and play City States Domination. There is also a third alternative. You can actually get Hex from referring a friend right now in the Adertive control panel. So if you haven't referred friends, now is a perfect time to do it. You can get up to 250 Hex uh, just for sending out a few invites, and that'll give you a head start when City States Domination comes out. So something to keep in mind. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about builders, because this is an important mechanic. This works the same as in City States Medieval. We currently have zero out of one building builders because we've been constructing our house. As you can see right now, it's just gone back to one out of one. So this means at any given time currently, we can only upgrade or build one building at a time. And this is important to keep note of. So with that said, I think we're gonna talk about the buildings themselves now. So when we're taking a look at buildings, there's two very important things to note. The first is the tile type which in this case is planes. Now, planes is flat land, so it's suitable to build a house, which is what we have right here. Uh, you can see that right now, I'm actually upgrading this building to level two, and this house is gonna produce us with more villagers, which as we've learned are very important because you know they don't last forever. Once you use them, they're used. So we're gonna to need to keep producing these much like wood or stone. You can see some other information in here, such as a description, uh, the building level, whether resources can be collected or not. We can speed it up for Hex, much like in Medieval, but for now we're just going to let that tick over. If we take a look at our next tile here beside it, we've got a stone tile. Now, those of you who have been following development or have played similar games can probably imagine that a stone tile is going to be more suitable for a quarry. So we can put that there. And we don't have an available builder, of course, because we are upgrading our planes, but it gives you an idea. And there's many different types of buildings like that. We've only got a few to kind of showcase right now. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of placeholder images, but these are pretty easy to manage and that should give you a kind of basic idea there. Next, I think we're gonna talk about the castle. The castle is a really important part of City State's domination, and it serves a couple of purposes. The UI isn't extremely clear right now with what these are, but I am gonna be able to explain them to you. So firstly, when you upgrade your castle, you unlock access to being able to actually build certain buildings. So last night, for example, I found this gold mountain tile. I wasn't able to actually build anything on it because my castle level was too low. So it's gonna be very important to keep your castle upgraded as well as your resources coming in so you can kind of stay ahead and not fall behind. The other mechanic behind the castle, and this one's one of my personal favorites, and it's unique to City State's domination, is that every time that you upgrade your castle, you unlock one of these hidden or dark tiles. Dark tiles are undiscovered land in your territory, and you can choose to do one of the following. The first one I'm going to talk about is the buy option, 
And this allows you to pay Hex to straight up buy the tile without knowing what you're getting. So let's do that here. And we've got a planes tile. And that's kind of disappointing because we actually already have a lot of planes and I was hoping for something a little bit more exotic. But we've spent the money and now we've got this tile. And maybe we don't actually want to build a house on it right now. So it's just sitting there, not doing anything. So a more cautious player might opt to spend their hex at a lesser rate on scouting a tile. So let's see what we get here. A forest. Again, this isn't great. We already have enough forests, but at least we just scouted the tile and we paid less resources for it. So we can ignore this for now and focus on other parts of the game. So now we're going to talk about some of the other options that we've kind of just gone past and haven't mentioned. The first one of which is terraforming. And terraforming will be quite important, I imagine particularly at the start of the game and maybe late game when you're shuffling around your empire. Terraforming allows you to convert a forest tile into a plains tile, or a plains tile into a forest. So let's say for example we'd started off with an abundance of forest tiles, but we were in a situation where we couldn't build villagers in order to upgrade or make other buildings. We can terraform our forest tile here into a plains and then build a house on it. The next thing I'm going to talk about is demolishing a building. Now, right now I don't actually have any buildings to demolish because I've destroyed them all or I haven't built them yet. But, for example, on this plains tile here, when I started out, the only thing I could actually build on it was um, a house. However, now my castle level's higher and I've unlocked more blueprints, so maybe I want to put something else on it. So in this case, I would demolish the building and I would hit build. And as you can see, we have a lot more options here. So I want to build a training camp because I think troops are going to be useful. But on the other side of the coin, I think a brewery is more fun. So <laughs> unfortunately, my castle level's too low, so no beer yet. But we can actually build the camp and it's going to take a while, but that's how you do that. So if you have built too many houses, you can always go back and demolish. The same as if you've bought tiles that you don't need, you can demolish and use them for later on. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the discard tile, and this is going to be important. Many of you, when I talked about the castle and how getting your tiles was a little bit of RNG, probably loved that. If you're a bit of a gambler like myself, I can imagine it would appeal to you greatly. However, a lot of people, and rightfully so, probably don't like the idea of their entire account's progression being based purely on luck. The discard tile option allows you to reset a tile back to its dark or hidden tile state, and you can re-roll these. Now keep in mind that scouting and buying do cost hex, so it's going to be dependent on how much hex you can spare. But let's just say these were both forests. Now I've got a mountain iron tile back, which is much more lucrative to me right now, so I'm going to buy that, and that's been a positive step in my account. And that brings us to the end of our City States Domination update video. We hope that you've enjoyed seeing the lightweight gameplay and the unique differences that set it apart from Medieval. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, please get us in the Discord. All our social links are in the description below.